on because this past Sunday, AEW All Out emanated live from the United States Center. Obviously, crowd was hot. CM Punk had just gotten fired. Um, I just wanted to know some of your takeaways about this All Out pay-per-view. Okay, so I was late watching it. I actually started watching the pay-per-view last night. And I felt like there was a certain energy when I was watching All Out. And it made me really happy. It felt as though that since the roster was in, obviously, as the fans were, the news that happened the day before, it felt like the roster went above and beyond to try to demonstrate that, like, just because this one person is not here doesn't mean we stop moving. Mm. And it felt like everyone in every single match was trying to go hard and put on a damn good show. Now, obviously, it didn't feel like All In. You know, All In was just like a spectacle on its own. But it felt like it was a well-rounded pay-per-view that didn't really have any low points. To the point where, like... I could see, like, a few weeks passing, and the CM Punk news is just, like, left in history. Because I'm like, wow. Like, it just seemed as if everyone here was just, like, happy. Like, like as if, like, a weight was lifted off their chest. So, you know, I, I just congratulate everyone that, like, participated in the, in the pay-per-view because it was a damn good show. Um, my biggest matches so far, for me, that were definitely my takeaways. Number one for me has to be Ricky Starks and Daniel Bryan's match, or Bryan Danielson, whatever one you want to go with. That match was so fucking good, and I feel like anytime I see Ricky Starks, I'm like, he's a fucking star, he's a fucking star. But that match itself was so fucking good. I didn't even see, like, the cocky side of Ricky Starks anymore. I just saw, like, the the hungry version of Ricky Stars. Like he just like I never seen him like so thirsty in like not a bad way, but like hungry and thirsty for this win. And I love the way the match fucking finished. It was to me like this top tier storytelling. And I just fucking love the fact that he went out like screaming. <laughs> screaming and his eyes are bulging out of his head. I watched every vein pop out his fucking head while both of them are bleeding. And he is being choked the fuck out. And he's just like, I don't respect this piece of shit. I be damned if I tap to this motherfucker. And he just went out screaming maniacally and just passed out. I was just like, that is fucking amazing. Like, (laughs) ah, no, it was just so good. It was so good. I ran back the match again. I was like, this is wrestling. That was a match that was so good. It made me proud to be a wrestling fan. I'm like, damn, if I want to put someone on to a wrestling match and help them understand why I like this shit so much, I'm going to refer to that one. That's how much I fucking love that match. That was great shit. Um, Another match that was a match, a a common match of the night, um, fucking Kenny Omega versus Takeda. Am I pronouncing his name right? Takeshita. Takeshita. Yeah. That's like Takeda. Who fucking that just met, met that didn't mix up Sheeta and his name. You Takesha. just made a love child of names. <laughs> I just made a ship name. But that match was fucking amazing. It was really long, and at first I'm like, yo, they dragging this, they dragging this. But then it picked up. It picked up again just when I got a little bit bored. And it was it, it reminded me of like the matches that Kenny would have when he was in Japan. And I thought mm-hmm. the match was hard hitting. It was scary. It scared the shit out of me. They were they, Kenny's neck must be fucked up, bro. From that, from that, I don't even know what you call that move. I think they called the avalanche on on commentary. But there was a yeah. point where he just threw Kenny's body over his head, and then it flung sideways. And then <laughs> uh, the, the, that man who's in my boss landed on his ass, but then Kenny fell like a half a second after, and his neck fell on his ankle. I'm like. Like, he fucked his shit up. He fucked his shit up. And 100%. I didn't, And I guessed on him winning. I guessed on him winning last week. And he actually won. I was like, what? They have to fight again. They have to. And I want to see it. I want to fucking see it. And then the, I think the third match for me that was the match of the night has to definitely be 
Miro versus Hobbs. I don't really care for Hobbs because he pissed me off off of the, off of the Big Soul situation, but I have to give him credit where it's due. That match was so good. The only thing that pissed me off was the ending. But it was, like, nice to see just, a, like, an old-school classic match between two big meaty men or whatever. Like, laughing me. Crowd was chanting it the whole fucking time. I loved it. I loved it. It was still fast-paced for, like, big men doing big moves, but, like, Hobbs is super athletic, and, mm-hmm. and Samoa Joe was just threatening to look at. Like, she was chopping Hobbs the fuck up. Hobbs is, 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 is very much melanated, and I saw a red pigment. After all them chaps on their hands, he was fucking this man up. He was fucking this man up. But ultimately at the end, uh, who got over on who? I think it was a win through a, through a camera clutch. Is that his finisher, by the way? I have to ask. Yeah. The band That's his finisher? Your blood. Yeah, I think it is. It's the, it's, it was, I forgot what it was called in WWE, but like the one where he like stomps on the back and then he like picks him up and then does the thing. Yeah, that's, that's his, that's his finisher. That's been his thing. I, like I said, I don't be keeping up with this man. I just, I just haven't seen a camel in such a long time. Jordan is so popular, y'all. Like he Sorry. does. That was not, my cool. <laughs> But keep going. He's this shit up. Hold on, but, matter of uh, fact, I'm gonna answer on. I'm gonna answer on there. Hold on. B a b. B a b. Hold on. Is she shy? I can't hear you. What'd you say? I can't hear you at all. Ooh. Oh, well, I guess that's good that. But, um, keep going. You know, she's calling me again. Hopefully this time she'll <laughs> be at least. Can you hear me now? You can hear me? Yeah. I can't hear you. Oh, actually, yes, I can hear you. Can you see my face? Yeah, I see your face. You're not satisfied you with the, the train, your favorite. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ooh, I see all them, I see all them, them them subway logos in the back. Oh my god, I know. You are jumping for joy. Baby, you want to know something else? In 20 years, you're going to be getting royalties from a Culture 316 podcast episode because you're on the show. Tell the people them hi. I love people then. Okay, BAB, let me know when you get to where you get to. And now you're a contributor. Now, now you're a wrestling analyst. Look at my girlfriend, the wrestling analyst. But the hell happened to my headphones? It didn't fill out. But um, sorry, y'all. That was my girlfriend. I had to pick up that call. But as you were, you were talking about Takeshita. You were talking. No, you were talking about no, Miro no, and, and Hobbs. And, and Hobbs yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that match was so fucking good. And I just love the fact that when it comes to AEW, they pay attention to everything and long term storytelling. Like I never had to really deal with too many logic gaps. Um, yeah. But we had the debut of Lana, CJ Perry, whatever name she's actually going along with. And I love the fact that, one, she came out the way I would have came out defending my man. She <laughs> wasted no time. She didn't even, like, do her wave, her little her little pose. No, no, no. Right. Lana came ready to fight. She came through off her motherfucking heel, got a chair out, and she came out swinging for her man. Hobbs is like three times her weight, maybe four times. I think like 270 pounds went ago. And she came out swinging, swinging. And then on top of that, Miro just looked at her like, you dirty bitch. I didn't forget. I didn't forget. Right. Continue that storyline from Bobby Lashley. Right. Right. That part. Like, I almost forgot. I literally almost forgot. But, but AEW didn't forget. So I was like, you know what? I like this. Because I want if, to. If y'all not going to forget about that part, I need Aiden English to come back. Aiden English need to come back because I also did not forget what happened in Milwaukee. We still waiting, sir. We still waiting for what happened in Milwaukee. Right? right? So do tell. Bring Aiden's ass back into this storyline. Because I'm going to be invested. If we could get Lana, we could get the whole Rusev day or Miro day back, 
I'm going to be invested. So, yeah, those are my three top matches from All Out. Everything else was also really great, but that had to be, like, the my, my three big takeaway matches that I was just like, wow, like, this show was really fucking good. Like, I wish I watched it in real time with y'all. I really do. But, Jordan, what do you think about the show? What were your top matches? What do you think? I concur with all your top matches um, pretty much. Like, I, I think that they did a really, really good job at, like, just putting over the talents that needed to be put over. But I'm going to add just one more thing. Because I will never, ever, ever stop giving John Moxley the credit that he deserves. That man is the true ace of AEW. Anytime there is a conflict, anytime the locker room is down, anytime where it seems like something's going on, John Moxley comes comes through, he puts on a performance, he elevates others, and he does what's needed to be done. He is the new AEW International Champion, um, but he made Orange look like a star. And I feel like it was my concern a with Orange, orange. Cassidy. Huh? Blood, he blood turned orange. him to a blood orange. <laughs> he, he did. A blood he did. Orange. 100%. He was leaking everywhere, as John would, would love it. Um, but I feel like the biggest concern with me was like with Orange Cassidy is that if he drops the title, like what is he going to do? What's but now I feel like he's in a prime position for like a TNT championship reign, maybe even somehow, some way going for a world title or even like being a part of the best friends as far as like being a trios champion. But he was able to kind of elevate Orange even in his loss. Um, and he was kind of able to kind of solidify himself as the ace of the company with that AEW International Championship. So I want to say that... Um, that for sure. Also, love the storytelling between that 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 moment between Samoa Joe and MJF. Um, the shove, I think that that was genius. And for those of you who are, aren't aware, uh, when Samoa Joe was a, the NXT champion, he was coming out for his match at a takeover. I think it was 2014 or 2015. MJF was actually the security Um play security and like MJF walked in front of him and Samoa Joe kind of pushed him back. So that spot was actually a callback to that spot in NXT. And it just, it was super intentional and it set up their feud and both of them are just great on the mic. And I'm just very much looking forward to see whatever they put together. It's going to be fantastic. But those are kind of like- good. Y'all are good for peeping that guy. I was trying to figure that shit out. I'm like, did I miss too many episodes or something? Like, why the fuck is he so mad? Like, Adam Cole no. was trying to stop this man, but right. like, MJF was seeing red. He came to fuck him up, and he tried to fuck him up again. Oh, right. like, why do you hate this man so much? What did he do? Uh-huh. But literally, it was it was a callback to that, and the idea was like, I'm not that same kid that you put. He even said it. He he said it in a tweet. He was like, I'm not that kid you pushed in Brooklyn. And oh, I was like, wow. That's cute. And also to make to make it interesting, MJF has referenced his WWE work in promos, uh, like specifically to, to be an extra like when he had his little feud with William Regal. So I thought that was very, very interesting. And But yeah, let us know how y'all felt about All Out and what may have you. Uh, I thought it was a great show. I think that they, they came out and I feel like what was... What made the difference is like the CM Punk conflict was lifted, but I also feel like the roster had something to prove. They were like, listen, like you said, we're good without Punk. We don't need him to put on a great show. And we're, that's what we're going to do. And they they understood the assignment and they did it. So let us know how y'all feel about All Out in the comments below, but we're going to be moving 